I don't think anyone's truly equipped to go out in front of a billion, two billion, three billion people on an Olympic stage, and you're scared out of your mind. On a 200 by 100 surface of ice, you wonder why you do this because you're so nervous. On two 10 inch lengths of quarter inch wide steel, through this, just get me through this. And you're to manipulate those edges for four and a half minutes and do triple jumps and athleticism and not make a mistake. It's impossible. But I found a way to be just, just good enough <laughs> to win the gold medal. The more I look back on it, I think it's unbelievably awesome. Like, that was me. You know, I always thought if I could be really good on the ice, you know, I could become famous. <laughs> I, I think I'm probably more known for my health problems now than I am for anything I ever did um, on skates. When I was very little, I suffered from a disease that stopped me from growing. It was in and out of hospitals for years and I was never really home. And so what ended up happening was I came back from kind of being in and out of hospitals and I ended up going to the skating club thing just by accident. And I found skating, which kind of took on a life of its own and, and it progressed and pretty soon I'm competing, pretty soon I'm living away from home. All my role models and, and the people that were teaching me how to live day to day were older skaters. So there was a lot of it that was terrific, but a lot of it that really um, wasn't guiding me in, in any real direction. It wasn't until I suffered the devastation of my mother losing her battle to cancer that something was awakened in me. I knew I needed something more, something better. I think I needed to have uh, some strength. and. My mother um, was my source of strength. When she was living, I would disappoint her. But when she, when she was gone, I, I just didn't ever want to be less than she thought I could be. I was happy to just work. I was happy to just entertain. I do well, and I think that was that was good enough. Skating had given me life as a child, and it given me, you know, kind of a strength as an adult. But what was about to happen uh, really changed my life forever. You know, cancer it put me into a phase of my life where I just needed to kind of sort it all out. I just survived something. Why? I, I survived something that took the most important person in my life off the planet, that was my mother. She died of cancer and I survived. What's my purpose now? What, what do I need to do? What, how do I? And a big part of that dust settling was getting with Tracy. And she brought me to the church. She took me to a minister, a man named Ken Durham. And the first thing he, he said to me, which was, was extraordinary, was he goes, you have to understand that Christianity is, is a faith of history. These things actually happened. And I go, okay, that's a good starting off point. And just study what has happened and, and see how that resonates in your own life. And it grew, it just sort of, it's like, okay, I get it. When you survive testicular cancer um, and you want to start a family, you don't know what the issues are going to be. And um, I prayed that I, I would someday become a father. Tracy and I, we got engaged and married. And then my son was born nine months and two days after we got married. <laughs> so I guess there was a plan there. I thought I paid my health dues when I had cancer, but this was a whole nother issue. Uh, I have a brain tumor. How do I tell my wife? And we have a 14 month old son. 
how do I how do I tell my wife that I have a brain tumor? I just gotten the news an hour before. I met them at the hotel, and I she goes, "What's going on?" And I said, "I have a brain tumor." And she took my hands, and without hesitation, she just started to pray. And it was in that moment I knew where I was going to put everything. My trust, my faith, everything. So the most powerful moment of my life. From that moment forward, we just said, whatever it is, whatever it takes, we'll face this. When they're gonna do a biopsy, they tell you, we're gonna drill a hole in your head, and then we're gonna take um, a needle down through your brain and take a piece of the tumor. <laughs> they said, we seem to have I've found a safe corridor <laughs> to do this. And I go, well, I'm not using most of it. But um, they tell you all the things that can go wrong in that surgery. And I remember waking up, and I looked at the clock, and it was 10.20. I knew where I was. And then the next thing I saw was my wife come in with a smile on her face. She said, they know what it is. And they, they found out that that brain tumor was one that I was born with, one that I'd had since birth, which inhibited my growth as a young child. That was the mysterious illness I had that they never diagnosed that got me into skating. Who would I be? without a brain tumor. I'm five foot four. If I were five eight, if I would have grown those years, five ten, where would I be? Who would I be? I could choose to look at it as debilitating, could choose to focus on the suffering. I choose to look at that brain tumor as the greatest gift I could have gotten because it made everything else possible. I didn't see past it this time. I didn't think I would survive. One point I was starting to really feel weak. And one nurse in particular, I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I just was uncomfortable. And she was, can, can I get you anything? And I, I just said, no. I go, I'm just a little scared. And she said, do you pray? I said, yes. And she said, what do you say when you pray? I go, well, I just, I just thank God for all the blessings in my life. Do you ask him for anything? No. I just, I just want him to know I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Well, who is God to you? And I said, well, I, I guess he's, he's my father. Oh, you're a father, right? Yes. If one of your children were hurting, wouldn't you want him to come to you for comfort and strength? Yes. So I changed the way I pray now. I ask, uninhibitedly, I ask. I ask to heal. I ask for strength. I ask for courage. I ask for another child. I want to talk about miracles. It's after surviving the pituitary brain tumor. It's impossible, practically impossible. I did six injections a week for two years. No luck. We're not meant to have another child. We gave that to God. A month later, we found out that Max was on his way. Miracle Max. When I look back and I see all those little moments in my life where I needed a great deal of strength, I understand that through a strong relationship with Jesus, you can endure anything. 
I just learned that the only true disability in life is a bad attitude. God is there to guide you through the tough spots. God was there every single time. <laughs> every single time. My name is Scott Hamilton, and I am second.